tonight, the secrets behind doubling your super. Plus, comparing phone cards, Red and Wilbur help out. I'm just timing this, 57, 58. Look, I've got to cut out. I can't. And make extra money as a movie extra. Money, money. I'm talking about money, 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 money. G'day, I'm Paul Clitheroe, and welcome to another week of money. What does $500 mean to you? A week's wage, a new leather jacket, or maybe a weekend away? Well, you're about to meet two people who used five big ones to build their own business empire. Jonathan Gowland discovered it was no picnic when he played Yogi Bear here at Wonderland in Sydney. So what's it actually like wearing one of these? Well, come on, Kim, let me show you. Yogi Bear is smarter than the average bear. Yogi Bear is always in the ranger's hair. Head exhaustion, chronically sore necks, a lot of fatigue. But Jonathan used his creativity and risked his last $500 to improve on the cumbersome suits. Well, actually, I actually bought a friend's mum sewing machine and it was this really old thing that you, if, the, if the power broke down, you could use a pedal on it. Since then, his company, Promo Technics, has made it big on the world stage, being the largest provider of user-friendly character costumes in the Southern Hemisphere. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, B1? I think I am. Not bad for a guy who slipped on a banana skin in his early days when he failed to secure long-term agreements on his designs. It would have been good to actually done a patent on them or done some sort of copyright on the costumes, uh, which would have protected us so if they did do what they're supposed to, which make all the money they did, we could have actually got some money out of that as well. But, you know, it's a mistake you learn and uh, you just got to keep it going. So you could have almost retired. Oh, I could have been in the Bahamas for right now. <laughs> Even so, Promo Technics is doing very well, with an annual turnover heading towards $2 million. If you had your time over again, how would you spend that first $500? I would actually put it to educating myself in how to administer and run a business. Uh, that was my greatest hurdle. The problem is I've sent an email and I put the wrong address on it and now I want to resend it and I can't find it. Oh, OK. All well, you do is go to Tools, resend oh, okay. this message. Easy. Thanks, Jase. No worries. Every office has got someone like him, one of those internet gurus with all the answers. But there's one young Sydney fellow who stopped handing out free advice and started charging for it. I was getting paid 15 and they were charging me out at 150 and I thought to myself, well, there's something a bit fishy going on here. Within a week, Daniel set up his own internet advisory service, started charging the customers himself and giving the shop a cut from his earnings. You were 19. That's very bold. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, um, it really, it, it seemed to me the thing to do at the time. I mean, the, the, there was the opportunity and I, and, I, and I took it. Daniel powered up the business, spending $500 on a hard drive. Since then, InfoLearn has just kept growing. And now I'm doing, uh, providing a complete range of computer and technology services, including internet services, to, uh, to, to companies. So is your long-term plan to be a multi-multi-millionaire? I, I, well, I'd love to see that, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think that's, I mean, I think that's something that, that every, every business owner has to have. They, have. they have to have a goal we can provide you with, with secure sites. Like many entrepreneurs, Daniel saw an opportunity and was quick to capitalise. I consider myself very fortunate that I, that I was able to do that and I was, I think, very much in the right place at the right time, which is a, which is a, big, a big part of it. If you had that $500 again, would you spend it any differently? No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I think um, I, I've been fairly happy with... I've, I've been cautious um, and, and not, you know, not spent money unnecessarily, but no, I, I don't think so. Well, there you go. Next time you have some spare money in your wallet, think again before you go out and blow it all. Jonathan and Daniel are living proof that if you've got an idea and you can back it up with some experience in the field, you can become your own boss with as little as $500. Money, 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 money. Last week we revealed how 24,000 people lost almost half of their superannuation money. To find that at the end of the day there's nothing in the can, uh, it's very, very, but in, at least disappointing. They all contributed to the super fund EPAS, which made poor property investment decisions in Tasmania, resulting in the retirement nest egg of members dropping by at least 43%. So a terrible investment decision has left EPAS members with a big loss. 
But what worries me even more is the fact that hundreds of thousands of Australians have lost all or at least part of their super, as one lady here in Cairns nearly did. Before becoming a full-time mum, Kim Capetti had three different jobs in five years and ended up with three different superannuation accounts. Accounts she hasn't touched for at least the past seven years. It's um, my money and I should know where it is. I don't think a lot of young people realise how important superannuation is, that it is your money. And Kim quickly found out how true that was when she decided to combine her three super accounts into one. When I went digging around trying to consolidate my superannuation, it was a matter of where is it? It wasn't there, I couldn't find it. It took Kim 18 months of searching before she finally tracked down her missing super through the Australian Tax Office which administers what's called the Lost Members Register. It looks after super accounts that haven't been used for more than two years. And as Kim eventually found out, the information was just one phone call away. So anyone like Kim, and believe it or not, there are currently around two million names on the register, can phone and find out exactly where their super is. And with an average account balance of around $1,700, we're not exactly talking about loose change here. But what's even worse is the fact that the longer your super remains lost, the more it could cost you. If Kim had been more aware of her super, she would have known it was invested in reliable, low-risk funds which attract a steady, but minimum, amount of interest. However, given that Kim's retirement is still at least 30 years away, she'd benefit greatly from having her money invested in growth funds, with the majority of the money in shares and property. Now, do you realise, if we'd found this money seven years ago, we could have doubled it by today? I don't want to hear that, Paul. <laughs> well, listen to this, because we've made the math simple. Say you're earning $40,000 and want to retire in 40 years' time, with your super going into a low-risk fund, where your money's invested in mainly fixed interest. You'd end up with a retirement nest egg worth nearly $400,000. Take a little more risk and direct your money into a balanced fund of fixed interest and shares, and you'd have a bit over $590,000. But put it into a higher risk growth fund where your super is going mainly into shares, and you'd finish work with just under a million dollars. I know which decision I'd be making. I could certainly find plenty of ways to enjoy an extra half a million dollars in my retirement. So the message when it comes to super is pretty clear. Super is not a set and forget type of investment. You've got to keep tabs on it and become super active to make sure you achieve your goals. You've got to get the best performance possible with your super. That means keeping track of your money and making sure it's going into the right sort of investments. You also have to realise how much fees will affect the heights you finally reach with super. Just 1% extra in fees a year could cost you around $100,000 over a lifetime. You can't afford any slip-ups from the people investing your money, so you've got to take an interest in who the trustees are administering your fund. Finally, employer contributions will certainly help to get you to the line, but a top super performance relies on you making an extra effort. Add an extra 1% to your personal contributions each time you get a pay rise. That way you're sure to finish way ahead in your retirement. More on those super active rules and how to maximise your super are available in this month's Money Magazine. But if you've got access to the internet, we've got a very effective way for you to find out just what your super is going to be worth. Go to the Money website and click on the Super Calculator. It's an interactive screen that'll tell you exactly how your super is going. You can enter all your personal details like age, salary and how much you're currently putting in and the calculator does the rest. The most important thing to remember with super is that it's your money. And a small amount of effort now will mean a great deal more to spend in your retirement. Here we go. And action. Ah, showbiz. The bright lights, the big stars and big money. Seems a world away to most of us, but you don't need to be a cruiser or a kidman to share the spotlight and some of the money.
When Steve Brown isn't working as a fireman, he seeks adventure as an extra in TV shows, commercials, even big name movies. I've been painted gold, silver, black, red, brown in, in sort of full body paint. Um, I've been a number of superheroes, I've been an alien. Probably my, my best thing that I do is, is man reading paper on park bench. I, I, I really enjoy that role and I do it quite well. Steve was discovered while working at a bottle shop. He joined an agency and now he gets a steady stream of work. There's been the you know occasional job where you've sort of been featured and, and it's been quite lucrative, but other than that, just, just pocket money, just spending money, just something extra. So how much money are we talking about for extras work? Well, for TV commercials, you'll get paid at least $18 an hour. For TV dramas, $19 and film, $17 an hour. These are the award rates and you could get paid considerably more. Voiceover work can be lucrative as well. And for Steve, it's another string to his bow. You want me to do something? Well, give us you? a preview. <laughs> do I have to? Yes. Uh, don't play stupid with me. Don't young. play stupid with me, young man. If you want a piece of the action, then you have to get yourself an agent. A good one usually costs around two to three hundred dollars a year plus commission, and that's about ten percent of what you earn. You'll also need some professional photographs, and other than that, all you can do is wait by the phone. Oh, and you can expect a lot of waiting around as an extra. For every minute that goes to air, there's countless hours of setting up. How's the casting this morning? David Cushion runs the agency Extras in Sydney. Great money if you can get it, but there's a lot more people unemployed in the business than there are employed. Despite that warning, David says it's the kind of work just about anyone can have a shot at. We uh, are always interested in seeing people of all shapes and sizes, different looks from really attractive model people right through to real character people. I had to sit in the back of a taxi and threaten the driver with my umbrella and say, slow down, slow down, you're going too fast. Pensioner Betty Blue is 80 years old and still highly sought after for extras work. I was so lucky. They took a liking to my poor old face and uh, I had so much work. I've done some wonderful things. Give that to someone you love and make them happy today. You're not shy, are you? Oh, no. <laughs> no good being shy in this business. <laughs> Betty's work has even led her to do some still shots, much to the horror of her family. My granddaughter went to the doctors one day and she came back, she was horrified. She said, Nan, that doctor's got a book with your photograph of you in your brown pants. She was horrified. But that, that was the only one I've ever done undressed. Betty says even the less exciting jobs are worth her time because of the extra money she's making. Oh, it is worthwhile. It is worthwhile because a pension doesn't cover anything like that. I mean, this is putting jam on my bread and butter. Money, money, money. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye. If you're renting away from home a lot or you can't afford a mobile phone, then a phone card is probably a good option for you. But the way you use your phone card can have a big effect on the amount of talk time you get for your dollar. I'll just meet you outside the art gallery. It's one so we put STD phone cards to the test with the help of Red Simons and Wilbur Wilde. Okay, guys, this is the deal. Willie, I've got a $10 phone card for you and Red, a $10 phone card for you. Now, what I want you to do today is call me regularly during the day. During the day. And I'm going to right. monitor who gets the most talk time for their dog. That's great. Right. Do you understand? Perfectly clear. Right, okay. Great, Kim. I'm off Terrific. to Sydney. Lovely. Have a nice time. Uh, can I put lunch on this? While Red and Wilbur contemplated lunch, I started preparing dinner. Hello. Hi, Kim. It's Willie. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Willie. We've got to get you back down in Melbourne yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah. How? What are you cooking? I'm cooking chicken stir fry. Right. Now you know. You should chuck a bit of capsicum into there. You know that uh, always uh, is, like spices it up a bit. You know. Oh, capsicums, you reckon? How many? Just one? No, no I'm just timing this. 57, 58. Look, I've got to cut out. I can buy. Hello. What are you wearing? <laughs> This is going to be a very long day. Hello, Red. Red! <laughs> it soon became clear that Willie wasn't just helping me in the kitchen. He was working to a plan to get the Hello? most for his money. Hi, Willie. Thank you for your tips. Dinner looks really great. To round off the evening, yeah, would be nice like some cheese and uh, some coffee. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. What sort of coffee would you suggest? Hang on, look, time's up. I've got to split. Speak to you soon, bye. 
Hi, Willie. Kim. Oh, Red. It's Mr. Wonderful again. Oh. By the end of the day, Red and Wilbur had each made ten calls and it was time to tally the talk time. Thank you very much. Your phone card, please. Certainly. And yours? No. Come on. No. Now, you weren't at all very chatty. In fact, you were quite rude. I was quite rude, I bet. <laughs> now, uh, none of your calls were longer than ten seconds. Well, I was hoping for Paul Clitheroe. You, on the other hand, were delightful. Mm. You're a great person with whom to chat. But you were on for a bit of a chat, though, weren't you? I was, but only up to a point, because the way to get value out of these things is to get your full minute, right? Right up to the full minute. 57, 58, got to go. That's right. I declare you the winner with the most talk time. Thanks, Kim. Oh, hello. Oh. Sport, the reason for the discrepancy is the way the phone cards are billed. With Telstra Phone Away Card, the one we used, you're billed 40 cents every time you make a call, followed by 27 cents per minute between Melbourne and Sydney, which is deducted in advance. So regardless of whether you talk for 10 seconds or the full minute, you'll be charged as though you've used the entire minute. Remember, those figures relate to STD calls, but there are traps when calling locally as well. Telstra's phone cards are the only ones that charge a flat 40 cents per call. All the rest charge per minute. Trying to maintain a harmonious household can be tough. Just ask this extended family from Newcastle. I don't understand Nintendo at all. They don't understand stars. They don't understand anything. Sounds like a recipe for disaster. Grandma, mum, auntie, two kids, all living in the same house and all trying to get along. But strangely enough, it's working. And not only that, they're proving that the family that stays together, saves together. A year ago, Boyne, Elisa and Lorene's lives came to a crossroads. Elisa's marriage broke down, leaving her and her two children without a home. Her sister Lorene was sick of the renting treadmill and their mum Boyne's old house was in need of major repair. It was actually Mother's Day, if I remember correctly, and she, mum walked into the lounge room and just said, if you want to do it, let's do it. And I've just gone, oh, OK. <laughs> the three single women decided to relive the good old days and buy this five-bedroom home together. It was a wonderful idea, but I was terrified. <laughs> I was really scared that it wasn't going to work, that we wouldn't be able to get the mortgage, we wouldn't be able to live together, all those things. So, um, but I really wanted to do it because it was something I could call mine as well. The electricity, we won't be getting another one in for a while. Mm -hmm. That'll be three months. Our, um, mortgage account, do we have enough to cover this month? In there? Mm-hmm. We do? Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. Boyne used the sale of her house to put down a deposit, while Elisa and Lorene share the mortgage repayments. They can pay the mortgage off more quickly by renting out a granny flat attached to their new home. Elisa would have been spending double the amount on rent. Lorene would have been spending on rent. Whereas this way, they're paying half the rent they would have paid in a, in a rental situation and going to own their own home. It's my turn. You, oh. you set up your door. Oh. Oh. The one important lesson this family has learned is that getting along with each other is just as important as sorting out the finances. I suppose it's the type of people we are. I mean, we're not terribly argumentative. Lisa and Laureen can really have fights, but it's, it, it's open and they get over it very quickly. And if things do get too hard to handle, they can move out, so long as they keep paying their share of the mortgage. She may marry a rich man or she may marry a millionaire, which would keep mum in good <laughs> for the rest of her life. Uh, they could buy another home. It doesn't mean they're going to have to live here all the time, but the, the, the end result will be that they'll own it. Next, an unbelievable shopping bonanza. It's like Christmas every day in this place. Of Frankie J. Holder. Fruit from our own backyard. Bird's Backyard, 7.30 Friday on 9. Money, money, money. If you're lucky enough to travel, you'll know what a great sight it is to see your suitcase come through the doors and out onto the carousel at the airport. But with more than 2 billion separate pieces of luggage flying around the world each year, the odds are some of it won't get to where it's supposed to. So, where does it end up? 
Well, right here. This is the unclaimed baggage centre in the American state of Alabama. This is where lost luggage from right around the world reaches its final destination. And it's here that stuff that can't be reunited with its owner is sold at bargain basement prices. Two million lost bits and pieces find their way here every 12 months. It doesn't matter where the flights come from, if the luggage is lost somewhere in America and not claimed within 90 days, it comes here and is sold at huge discounts. Some items reduced by as much as 80%. It's like Christmas every day in this place. I mean, we, we, when we open up these bags and, and it could be a bag that, that uh, contain uh, collectibles from, from a, a Parisian shopping spree. Cameras are always in good supply and brands like Minolta or Canon, which often cost thousands, can be bought for as little as $50. There's an unlimited number of CDs, some used, some brand new, and the most you can expect to pay? Five dollars. There's a ton of sports stuff too. For instance, you could roll out on these blades for fifteen dollars. Or run out on a pair of shoes for ten dollars. Tennis anyone? Rackets start at five dollars a hit and skis and ski boots for only $20. Now, I really can't believe that anyone would leave their golf sticks behind, but how would you like to buy some ping golf clubs for $30 each? Anywhere else, they could cost you hundreds. And there's at least one Aussie waxhead out there looking for a wave, minus one very important thing. Recognise this? Well, I know where you can get it back for $95. This funny little fellow, though, has to take the prize for the most unusual find. He's one of Jim Henson's original Muppet creations from the 1986 movie, The Labyrinth. You know, if, if these bags could talk, I'm sure they'd have quite a story to tell. Luggage lost in Australia doesn't make its way to a store, but it is on sale to the public at various auctions throughout the year. And that just about wraps up money for another week. But first, let's take a look at what's on next Wednesday night. Credit card fees. How some small businesses are beating the system and saving you money. And let's talk Telstra. To buy or not to buy, we'll give you the answers. That's next week on Money. I'll see you there. Second share offer. Plus, check washing. It gives money laundering a whole new meaning. And income protection insurance. Can you afford not to have it?